right, everybody. Wife went out yesterday on a mission by herself, left me at home, taking care of the cats. What is that all about? I don't even know. I don't even know. So she got some stuff on her own, and I'm just going to unbox what she got. A cool bird made of feathers of some sort, made in Mexico. Super neat carved wooden frame. And there are three of those. <laughs> Isn't that a handsome little gathering? She got this bottle. Um, I believe that this was five dollars. This is a Wheaton glass bottle, an eagle, and uh, I dig on some Wheaton, buddy. That's my jam. I went there when I was a little kid, watched them blow glass in Wheaton, Wheaton Village in New Jersey. So every time we uh see a piece of Wheaton for cheap, I go ahead and grab that, and that's just for myself. You know, it's important to, uh, you know, memories are like the reason we do all this, you know? It's, uh, it'd be pointless. Oh, I don't want to say it'd be pointless. You can still love things without having any memories attached to them or anything, but, but yeah, sometimes it just makes something that much more special. It's a neat little bottle with a stopper there. Let me uh, come in on that. Weird little frosted kind of section there. Neat little stopper. Oh, you know, I suppose we're just talking about the elephants in the room. She got this uh, Murano bowl. This was $8. So, yeah, we went ahead and took that. And then she got this Murano bowl. This was $12. I'm going to flip this over and you're going to see something really cool. Obviously the design is super neat, but from the front you can't really tell that that's silver leaf because of the because of the cased red. You can see kind of where it splits right there, unless I'm not getting a good angle on it. You see where it's clear to red? So I think what they did is laid down like a flat piece of clear glass and then laid a piece of red over it. So then as they stretched and curled it and stuff, some of the red or orange became a little more apparent. And uh, isn't that a super cool thing? So then you flip it over and it's all silver and stuff. Isn't that wild? So yeah, Murano, Italy. If you can buy stuff from there, go ahead and do that. It's usually worth something. Uh, in fact, I've already sold that Red Bull for $45, and I think that's a very good price. You know, you look online at prices, and uh, you start seeing some pretty goofy things. Like, bowls pretty similar to mine for like $900 and stuff. And you know, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, time and effort equal, equal value. I mean, along with quality, obviously. But, uh... I mean, those aren't the least common things on the whole planet. Arnold, Japan. A pretty, pretty well-known ceramics company from Japan. Um, let's get her tag out of the way. And it said both of these worked. Yeah, I said both of them. You saw me put the two globes there. Domes, globes, whatever you want to call them. The glass thingies that go over their little light. And aren't they handsome? I know, you don't even really have to tell me. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, nice little lamp, buddy. So yeah, I think the wife did pretty good here. Now I did already notice this has a crack on it, but look how cool this is. I wouldn't have left it behind for nothing. It was like $6 with a 20% discount. So like, I don't know, I don't know, $4.80 mathematically speaking. And look at the hobs on it. It's such a crazy thing. 
I'm thinking maybe a West Virginia company like Canala or somebody like that. Not positive, not positive. Very handsome little Japanese bowl. It's got an odd kind of curl right there on the sides. Got another one over here. So I think like hand pinched. It's got a mark on it. I haven't looked it up. I think, I think this way. Maybe? I think so. That's its mark, and I'm going to look that up. And you can see there's a different thickness to this line here, and then it gets thinner as it, uh, as it ends. I'm not even showing you the line. So thicker line around to the thinner line. So you would think that that was painted in like a single brush stroke as they spun it. And then, yeah, it just has these two leaves on the inside. It's a very cool thing. That was not very expensive at all, so we went ahead and... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, what's happening behind me? <laughs> Don't get any ideas. Don't be cheeky now. Not every day I ask that question. Oh my goodness. It's just dropping stuff. Okay. Okay. You guys ready for next... Next stuff? Oh my goodness, I already have a broken thing. I bet I just did that a little bit ago. Let's eyeball. It's not looking great, is it? A little hand-painted rose on there. She was pretty. She was pretty in her day until she met me and I did that. What a jerk. Oh, I'll be mad at myself all day over that. I want to swear. I'm, uh, I'm editing myself. I very much want to swear. <laughs> I'm very upset about that. Ah. Still, plenty of reason to be jazzed, isn't there? I suppose so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. She did all right on that one, I suppose. I'm about to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Does that blow your mind? Um, let me make sure I'm getting all of her bags here. Um, I might have to edit myself briefly. You know, why don't we just because that's going to get stuck in there. I probably shouldn't have dumped that out of my table, but I wanted you guys to see the remnants. I don't want you to think I was kidding. You know what? I'm already going to move this big blue bottle. And throw this little green bottle in front of you. Kind of a teal, kind of a turquoise. I have to say that I believe this is going to be a Blanco bottle. Was that your stopper? Hmm. Must be. Must be. For some reason I was thinking it was a faceted stopper, but it must not be. Um, one second. I knew there was stuff missing here. So let's proceed. Maybe, I think maybe Ellie Smith, I'm not positive, I'll have to, I'll have to look it up, but a very cool green. Two fairly big bowls. Look at this hand-painted ceramic toothbrush holder. Could you get better looking than that? I mean, <laughs> no mark on the bottom or anything, but man, that is good looking. You are a good looking pup. So yeah, um... Let's see. Move this decanter over. Looks like she paid $10 for what I believe is going to be a Blanco decanter. Uh, she paid $20 for a jar of marbles. You know how we do. We ain't scared. Let me put these back here. Very gently. Gently. All right. Pilgrim glass. 
you're right in thinking that that is purple and crackle and pretty good. My wife claimed these for her own. I'm sure you understand why. So don't come at me, bro. Don't come at me. There's nothing I can do about it. She done said, these are mine. I paid more than I should have just because I wanted them. And I was like, yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's your call there, Betty. So my wife was down. Um, she went to volunteer with her electrician and uh, tradeswomen. And um, when she got there, they didn't really need her. <laughs> so uh, do you guys even think that goes together? Is that what that's supposed to look like? I'm going to call that a maybe. We'll, we'll take a picture of it and I'll Google Lens it. And we'll see what's what. If you've never watched my video on how to use Google Lens, go ahead and do that at some point, Zach. Oh my word. Okay. Quite a pink basket. Good lord. How rad is that thing? Woo! What's up, hotness? Dang. Dang, son. Yeah, I don't know who made that, but that's really pretty. And then this is that little pilgrim piece's brother. Also purple, just a little different shade. More of a purple than an amethyst, I'd say. Isn't that beautiful? And um, let's see, I'm gonna set that there because I want that to be a surprise because I think it's awesome. Now a lot of people have been bugging me about pink elephants, so I'm going to tell you right now, the first person that watches this video and tells me they want these pink elephants, I'm going to give them to them. Hold on a second. We are talking a trio of pink slag glass elephants. Let me try and arrange these in some sort of viewable fashion. <laughs> they are quite a scenario. So they're like chained together. I don't know. I don't know. They're just very cool. I don't know. You got little clear spots right at her trunk. There's like a cool clear spot. And it goes back into slag and everything. Let me see if I can set these somewhere where you can actually look at them while they're sitting. I don't particularly like the idea of chained elephants. I think if I was going to keep these, I'd cut that little chain off of them so they could just hang out and be little buddies. <sighs> and let us see. I think we're just about done. I think we're just about done. Do you believe that? Okay. Oh yeah, those swung glass vases. We never even talked about those, but... But this is important, so look at this. How cool is that thing? Wow! The super fine swirl pattern, so I'd call this an optic swirl. Uh, maybe West Virginia? I'm, I'm guessing West Virginia. Uh, maybe even more pilgrim glass? But goodness gravy, is that beautiful. Can you see the bottom also swirls? I mean, it all swirls. What they would do is take a chunk of glass and they'd put it in a... Uh, in a lined mold so as they're pushing it down there's a bunch of lines and then as they take it out they'll stretch it and twist the cane and uh, that's how you end up with that twisted glass there so this is like a handmade thing somebody took real skill and talent and uh, made that happen and what happens if we get a close-up of it it just goes wild doesn't it isn't that cool wow so good eye to my wife. She got a nice set of eyeballs on her. <laughs> oh, you know, I think we should talk about this blue vase. I believe those green ones are going to be six petals, and I think one's by Viking and one is by Ellie Smith. But this blue vase, it has an interesting pattern to it. Almost maybe like a fleur-de-lis before it got stretched. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look it up gonna have to work on that one but it is a very cool looking base and very cool color 
I don't know why I suddenly couldn't talk. Um, didn't tell you about one thing that I got, and it seems like it has some bearing particularly now. Um, got uh, some vintage Thanksgiving postcards and stuff, greeting cards, stuff like that. Um, you know, now I have to look at this other thing that's in here, because I swear it said... Um, okay, so the Danbury Mint attests that I own the Watchful Trio. Uh, okay. Alright then. Irritatey tady then. <laughs> Great. Now hold on, don't go anywhere, because the other, the other bag's way cooler. Hold on. Don't leave me, I miss you already. Thanksgiving greetings. And this has a Hallmark stamp on it. So they're definitely vintage. Well, that, that one. I showed you the, the front postcard and then the back of the back postcard. So I guess uh, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Okay, pretty shiny. So I'm going to say vintage. We can probably date that pretty easily. But that's an actual Hallmark postcard uh, for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow, look at this. With every good reason to greet you, for the giver of all good has blessed you, I send your regards and good wishes, you regards, on this Thanksgiving day. Wow. And this is all embossed. There's actual, like, a feel to it. I don't know if I can get you to see it or not. But this band down here, too. And that's a fairly substantially old postcard. Look at that. That is a Thanksgiving greeting from 1916. That's awesome. Wow. Wow. That is super cool. What's this one say? 1915. Wow, look at that one. Wow. That one's also all in Boston stuff. These are real history, you know? I mean, it's just, just wild. It's just wild. 1916. Some of these stamps might be valuable too. I don't think the green Washington stamp is typically particularly valuable. <laughs> this is awesome. Wow. Um, that one is from 1915. Here's a, here's a couple. This turkey's all embossed too. Oh, no, I, I am a dirty, dirty liar. Oh, but wow, look at the age on this one. My hand's a little shaky. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew, Grandpa Chet. This is for a two-cent stamp. Um, yeah, these are fairly, fairly old postcards. Here's to turkeys short and turkeys tall, turkeys large and turkeys small. Turkey's tender, turkey's tough, any old turk, so there's enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Isn't that neat? Wow. Uh, you know, I was just gonna say, you know, I could stop looking at these, but this is interesting to me, so if you want to cut out, I understand. I'm not gonna be mad at you or nothing. 1922. How cool is that? Wow. Look at the handwriting on this cat. Jeez, man, I wish. From Toledo, Ohio. <clears throat> um, I think just vintage on these. Well, this one for sure, maybe. I think a reproduction of an older card. You can tell a lot by like how intricate the marks and stuff are. I mean, this one says it's like recycled paper and stuff, so I mean, so clearly a little bit newer than, say, like this one, which doesn't say anything like that. Oh, and this was the, uh, the picture on that one. <laughs> Thanksgiving greetings. Just a, just a very nice painting of a turkey. I mean, obviously this isn't a hand painted, but 
It seems to have stuff all over the back of it. I don't know if that's like part of the design or what. Um, I believe that says 1902. I believe that says 1902 up there. Let me see if we can tell. Uh, maybe. Maybe. This one's definitely all embossed. I wonder, yeah, you can see when it glints, you can see all the detail to it. <laughs> and that's Uncle Sam chasing the turkey. And it's gold, um, gold gilt writing and stuff. Man, that's a pretty fancy one. From 1901 something. So I'm guessing, like, if we stick with the. Uh, if we stick with the rest of the datings. Man, and that stamp is just. Do you see that the stamp's barely stamped? I mean, that's a very good condition stamp. I don't know if it's worth anything or not, but. But dang. Usually, if the postmark is over it, you know, I mean, oh, well, look at this one. Let me get this out of the way before I absolutely destroy it. <clears throat> See, look at this stamp. I mean, comparatively speaking, I mean, they've obviously completely stamped over that. I think that one says 1909. Wishing you a happy Thanksgiving. Isn't that wild? 1909. Good old Thanksgiving. 1910. That's how they were talking. Good old Thanksgiving. Hello, Russell. How are you? Um, getting along this... Oh, how are you getting along this year? Do you have any fights? I think it says fights. I have some very bad little boys. Have to wash their mouths out with soap. Hope you are not that bad. Write me a letter someday, Aunt Ethel. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's awesome. From Terra Hot, uh, I think Indiana. Yeah, it's nineteen ten. Man, isn't that wild? She's talking about washing out little boys' mouths with soap and stuff. Isn't that? Isn't that? And look at that. That's the last one. Wow, what a beautiful card. All embossed again. Jeez. Oh, and this one doesn't have anything. Oh, no, it does. It does. Wow. It doesn't even look like it got sent. But that is about a fancy card back. Huh. So, yeah, this is Austin, Best Thing in 40 Antiques channel. Supporting my wife's uh, thrift and adventure. It looks like she did super good, so... So yeah, um, I condone it. <laughs> it's Austin, Best Second of 40 Antiques channel. Thanks for watching, as always. Sorry I hit the camera there. I'd like to apologize for that. It's going to happen again, though. I love you guys.